Okay, from this question, the C part of the question asks us to provide a rough S a rough sketch of H of omega using the pole zero um plots. So we need to get the pole zero plots first. And for us to get the pole zero plots, we we have to start from H of Z. Now, if you look at this very well, we see that this is raised to the power minus one, this is to the power minus two here. Mm? So we need to convert it to a form in such a way that the uh, the z term there will be positive. The, the power of z in this terms of a positive. And for us to do that, we we'll multiply with the highest power. The highest power here is minus two. So we use z to the power plus two to do that. Z to the power two. We we'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by z to the power plus two. So and when we do that, we are going to get z is the power 2 minus 1 all over 4 root 2 z, right? All over z squared minus 1 all over 2 root 2 z plus 1 over 16. So z, this and this will become 0, uh, 1. Okay, so from here we can now factorize. It's going to be z minus 1 all over 4 root 2. Right, and this is going to be. This is going to be. Um, if we expand this particular expression here, so we are going to. If we use the calculator to, to find this, like if we want to look for the expression here, like for instance, we want to get this one. So what we do is, we go to our calculator. We go to our calculator. So when we go to our calculator, what we we'll do at this point is we know that this is a quadratic expression. And this quadratic expression, if we want to enter it into our calculator, we just go to the the mode. We go to mode, we go to equation, we press five to go to equation. We go to the quadratic, which is number three. So we now enter the coefficients inside this equation so like this one now is one the coefficient of the first term here is one the coefficient of the second term is minus one all over two root two so we write it there so minus minus one divided by two root two right two root two so that's going to be the value here then the, the last one is going to be 1 over 16. 1 all over 16. So by the time we put everything there, we are going to be getting a complex number. As you can see, we have a complex number as our answer. So it's going to be Z minus. So this is square root of 2 all over 8 was j square root of 2 all over 8 hmm? then that is one one of the one of the roots of the equation then the other one if you click on this you have z minus the second one root 2 all over 8 minus j root 2 all over 8 so this is the second part of the expression so now that we have this, so the next thing is that we know what these ones will be. So if we want to convert this one particularly, we need to convert these ones to their um to their magnitude and angle form. So you can come back here, go to mode, go to complex, which is two. Now enter this expression and convert it to this is square root of two divided by 8 um, plus the second one, square root of 2, divided by 8, i, as is in form of comments, so you press this. So you convert it to magnitude and we press shift, complex number 3. So it goes, it gives you the uh, the magnitude angle form formula. So that's going to be z into z minus one all over four root two. 
so it's going to be z minus now this expression the way it is written here you can and you must ensure that this for you to get it like this it means this one is in radian i want to convert it to a degree can convert it to a degree but this at this point is is in radian z minus one all over four e raised to power j pi all over four this is a magnitude angle form hmm? the magnitude angle form so then the second one is z minus so the other one is so they are they are they are complex conjugates because of that don't need to waste our time it's going to be one all over four used to power minus j pi all over four hmm? so now that we know these values so what is our zeros so the zeros they are the values when you when you when you when you equate everything here to zero hmm? when you equate it to zero that's what you get so our zeros will be what when this one is zero z will be zero and z will be what one all over four root two all right one all over four root two then the poles the poles of these ones, the poles are the poles of um, this equals to zero. That is z minus one all over four u to power j pi over four. Huh? Then z minus one over four u to power minus j pi over four equals to zero. So when you equate this to zero as well, this is what you get. You get z equals to one all over four u raised to power j pi over four. And uh, 1 over 4 raised to the power j minus j pi over 4. So now that we have we have gotten our zeros, we have gotten our poles. We can draw the pole zero diagram for this. So to draw the pole zero diagram, what we just need to do at this point is to draw our circle. Draw the circle. Our unit circle. Now, if you look at this very well, you will see that um, the angle we are talking about here is pi all over 4. For the poles, you know, we represent the poles. You can see that the zero, the zero is located at the origin. We use circle to represent zero. It's also located at a point 1 all over 4 over 2, right, 4 over 2. So at, at this point, it has a particular point and the angle here is zero angle of this one is zero so it means it's on the positive real, real part of the equation on the positive side so this particular this particular guy is around this this point so we also represent the zero here so at the same time the poles we use x to represent the poles and the poles they have their own angle so this one is on the is on is on the zero degree angle. Mm -hmm. So this is the real part, and this is the imaginary part. So this is the j, this is minus j. So now this one is at an angle pi all over four. Pi all over four, and as this angle, the magnitude is one over four. So let's say the the pole is somewhere around here. I say from here to here, the magnitude is 1 over 4. It does not get to 1. You know, from here to here is 1. But this one is around 1 over 4. Rough sketching. This is a rough sketch. So it's not that accurate. So also, the other one, the other pole, is also on this end. It's also at an angle minus pi all over 4. Mm? And it's also towards this end. You can see that this one is longer than this one that is the the zero the poles they have a longer value they, they have a higher value so of course its length is supposed to be long it has to it has to have a longer length than the zero yeah and because of that the pole is dominating the the scene and because the pole is dominating the scene at that point you can see zero at the origin does not have any influence on the h omega now if you want to draw the h omega plots our h omega plots is going to be 
like this so we have pi all over 4 somewhere around here and we have minus pi over 4 somewhere around here so this is the omega pi over 4 and minus pi all over 4 now this particular expression now this particular expression we will see that um to get the angle the angle of the zero of the one on this on the zero axis as in on the real axis it's going to be somewhere around here because this particular value is not up to one so the zero will not be on the zero axis of the h omega so it will come up a bit and the thing is e zero suppresses h omega while the pole it's it protrudes the h omega so it's this one protrudes the h omega at this point so it protrudes it the pole protrudes the h omega at this point also this one protrudes the h omega at this point huh? so this is the point where the pole protrudes the h omega it protrudes it at this point so the influence of the pole you know they tend to push the h omega up while the zero they tend to pull the h omega down towards the the origin at the 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 omega axis so the pole is pulling it at angle zero angle zero this is the angle zero because this one is at angle zero here so from this angle this uh, this is pi all over four and this is angle 90 so it goes continues like that 180 but this particular value here is at angle zero that's why it is at this point it is effect is only at this point and this would have gone down further if this magnitude is up to one for instance if the magnitude is up to one it should have been on this axis but because it is not up to one there will be a space between these points and this one also protrudes hmm? It protrudes the curve of h omega up mm? and if this one this one if if it's for instance at one if this one gets up to one then this will be, this will be missing at infinity but because it's not up to one there is a point of um there is a point at that point so where there is um uh, where the stick is so this is how we draw the rough estimate of the of the pole zero, yeah, of the pole zero plots.